old friends catching up, the Chapel Brothers, our special guests up soon here on the stage, reflecting on three amazing lives in cricket and some very important fundraising to come as well. Greg Chapel made it clear what the mission of the Foundation is and the wonderful work that it does. Never easy in the current environment to steer an organisation like this. And if anything, it's a, it's a day and an age where maintaining control over an organisation, steering the ship, never been harder. The one of the only John Howard here, but you would know how hard it is, sir, to maintain a position of leadership, control, authority. Anthony Albanese is finding it out right now as we speak. Executive power, so hard to hold on to. How lucky are we in the good ship Chapel Foundation to sail with this man at the helm? The one and the only, please, a big Chapel Foundation round of applause. Welcome for Andashak Ameta! Enough of Vaijanti Mala and Joy Mukherjee. Arjun, whichever way you dice it, that song is not flattering. You are implying that I am Abdullah. So just because I have a beard, I am Abdullah. Could I not be a Virat Kohli fan? This beard is merely a sign that I am a hipster <laughs> or a wannabe left-wing intellectual like, I don't know, Philip Adams, Barry Jones, Adam Spencer. <laughs> Unless you are accusing me of being a snake charmer or worse still, a snake oil salesman. Sure, all those laughing in agreement, you are cynical and disgusting. Sad to see, but you are absolutely right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. There are many important people, here I go, start crying. There are many important people in this room, sure. Our board of directors for me is prime. They are a highly diligent, dedicated and hardworking bunch and I stand on the shoulders of giants. Uh, these strong men and women are there and I would ask them to stand up, please. Peter Alford, Wangi Carpio. Come on, stand up. Katie Brito, Arjun Deer, Dean Kaino, Peter Lawler, Samantha Lane, and Ian Poole. And our honorary treasurer, Dhanraj who shares a surname with me, not the money. Greg is, of course, a rock. He is simply amazing. There are other notables in this room, and so far we have not mentioned them, so I might. David and Sonia Evans, David Gallup, chairman of Venues New South Wales, Kerry Mather, 
CEO of Venues New South Wales. Uh, Brad Hazard, former health minister. Uh, Seema Mishra of our pro bono solicitors, Norton Rose. Barry O'Farrell, ex New South Wales Premier and recently His Excellency, High Commissioner to India. Tony Shepard, former chair of Venues New South Wales and chair of every organization known to mankind. <laughs> Kate Washington, New South Wales Minister for Families and Communities. Andrew Yates, very important man for us. KPMG CEO and KPMG are our honorary auditors. These are all very significant people. Now, I might be a snake oil salesman and ignore my message. However, I urge you, between courses, to go to table numbers 35, 39, 43, 45, and 47. To me, those tables back in Siberia have the real heroes and heroines in the room. People like Bernie Shakeshaft of Backtrack, Lisa Graham, and Virginia Howard of Taldumandi, Jason Juretic and Simon Bird of Stepping Stone, Dr. Terry Said and Leo Wasserkug of Waze and Justin Gordon of the Burdekin Association. The Chapel Foundation merely raises money. Those people transform lives. They give hope. They keep kids alive. They wipe away their tears. They give them a roof, clothe, mentor, educate, and train them. Please, I urge you during the break to go up to those tables which are full of staff and directors of our partner charities, talk to them, Ask them if what I am about to tell you is bullshit and decide if my rhetoric, polemic, anger, passion, tears are all confected. I have been blessed with copious uh, lacrimal glands which do my bidding at call and hopefully they loosen your wallets. These are such ridiculous times, even people with money and good jobs can hardly afford homes. If they can afford homes, they are struggling with their mortgages. I know most of you are not amongst them, or you wouldn't be here paying 350 bucks minimum for a seat and up to $1,000 a head to be lectured and hectored by me. And if you've scored a freebie, well, I just told you what is the minimum we expect from you. <laughs> now imagine if you can't afford a home and can't even afford to rent a home. What options then? SFA. We are simply not building enough homes. Forget about social housing. We aren't even building anti-social housing. <laughs> State and federal governments need to really stop talking about this and get on with it. 
governments of both stripes effortlessly found $368 billion to splurge on eight nuclear-powered submarines over the next 30 years, which will definitely put a target on our backs. Forget about the relevance of that technology and its obsolescence 30 years from now in this age of drones and AI and climate extremism and robots. I just want a sick bucket every time I hear that ridiculous word. AUKUS! AUKUS! <laughs> Meanwhile, the acute, desperate, existential threat of homelessness, which would take less than a third of that $368 billion, about 117 billion to be precise, is required to eliminate, not mitigate, eliminate homelessness. And this governments of all stripes balk at. Okay, I have vented my spleen and said all the politically charged stuff that Greg hates me saying. From now on, you won't hear an original thought from me. So it might finally be worth tuning in. My mate, James Allen, who at 22 was Australia's youngest Everest, Everest summit year in 1995, has an interesting take. He says Australia's prison population is 40,000 plus. And James says that if the homeless took up arms and went to prison, there would be no homeless. Everyone would be fed, housed, clothed, watered, and cracked into jobs. So why don't they? They don't because they have pride in themselves and respect for their fellow men, despite what others have or may have done to them. Remember that there are over 125,000 homeless in Australia, out of which 46,000 are aged under 35. Justine Gordon, CEO of our partners, the Burdekin Association says, and I quote, most of the children and young people in our care and housing have never had an adult they can trust and rely on. If anything, many adults have neglected or abused them in some way. Your donations ensure that we can show them that adults can be trusted. We tell them where we got our money from and we tell them that there are adults that care about them. Over time, we see them start to believe in themselves and to believe that there are adults that care. The children and young people come to us because they have no safe family or their family has given up on them. We need everyone here to be their family. Bernie Shakeshaft of Backtrack says, I just spoke to the advocate for children, New South Wales. They have just released a report where they are forecasting a sharp rise in young people unable to maintain their current accommodation post-COVID and given the cost of living. They found 65% of young adults were experiencing housing stress, spending more than a third of their income on accommodation. Look, I could go on giving these hard luck stories, uh, but you know, you, you get the point that as a society, we need, we are better than this. We need to ensure that homelessness is a bad dream from the past. Now, Jason Juretic of Stepping Stone said, remember these children are homeless through no fault of their own. It might be hard to imagine, but you and your family could have ended up homeless through circumstances outside your control. It's a human right for these children to have a safe home and a roof above their head. 
everyone in this roof is privileged. So let's do the right thing and dig deep and make generous donations to help these children become the best they can. Geez, I hope you and TCF smash it out of the park more than any other year, he adds. We really need help. This week I'm pausing one of our refuges as donations have slowed incredibly due to the economic downturn. But here is my favorite response. I had asked all our charity partners this question. If there's just one or two things I should say in my speech at the Chapel Foundation dinner to educate, to startle folks, or and lubricate wallets, what should it be? Briefly, please. So Dr. Terry Said of Waze, who you'll see soon, said, your speeches have always had the perfect mix of a sprinkling of humor and a lot of sincerity. I would stick to this formula. So Terry, now you know why you are being invited to the stage with Jenny shortly. <laughs> like me, you seem to be a firm believer in the art and power of flattery. I am relieved that you didn't get it the other way around, a lot of humor and a sprinkling of sincerity. Mind you, even that I would have happily gouged on. A few weeks ago, Greg Chappell sent me a text. He is a far more upbeat character than I am. He said, that the system is so broken that he felt what we were doing is putting band-aids on cancer. He said, we must keep going, but we are fighting with both hands tied behind our backs. But go on, we must. You can keep us going. Please give till it hurts. Now I want to introduce a fantastic bloke, Jimmy Smith. Jimmy played professional rugby league for East, West, etc. About 148 games. More importantly, he's a great supporter of TCF and on three occasions has been mad enough to sleep out in the open under the stars on cardboard and plastic to raise funds for us on cold and wet winter nights. Jimmy, where are you? To Jimmy I say what Cuba Gooding Jr. wanted Tom Cruise to yell out loudly and repeatedly in Jerry Maguire. Show me the money! <laughs> Show me the money! <laughs> Please, I beg you, pay ridiculous prizes for things you don't need. <laughs> and thank you sincerely for your support, which we value greatly. It means much more than you might ever imagine. Thank you, Darshak. Written, spoken and authorised by Darshak Mehta for the compliments will get you everywhere party, I think, just there. So, big round of applause again for <laughs> Chairman Darshak. <laughs>